Hey guys, good morning. Thank you very much for joining me in this session. First of all, I'd like to uh, apologize. I couldn't be there in person. Um, thank you very much uh, uh, to Force Asia for uh, still allowing this to happen through uh, recording. Okay, without further ado, let's uh, let's start. Just a little, little intro. My full name is Ricky Sutiawan. I have been uh, doing uh, database and operations engineering for the past uh, 20 years plus. Um, I've been exposed to open source uh, since I started working in the Oracle MySQL. That was 2012. And then uh, I never looked back ever since. Now, I also a uh, DevOps uh, consultant, having a lot of fun helping companies to transform uh, their culture into DevOps culture. Without further ado, let's uh, start with what is Kubernetes. Kubernetes was originally developed by Google. Uh, the, its aim is only to manage distributed container instances across thousands of nodes or servers in Google. There are other uh, similar competing products like uh, Mesos and Docker Swarm, but Kubernetes by far has much wider adoption and now the de facto standard for container management. I'd like to quip a, a little excerpt from Red Hat. So basically, according to Red Hat, Kubernetes helps you to easily and efficiently manage those clusters, containers clusters. Clusters can span hosts across public and private and hybrid clouds. For this reason, Kubernetes is an ideal platform for hosting cloud native applications that require rapid scaling. For instance, like uh, real-time data streaming. Now, before we go further, let's step back for a bit and take a look at what is the difference between container and VM. So, VM, as you might already know and be and aware, that uh, each VM has its own operating system files. So. Um, each of them can have different operating system. You can have Linux, you can have uh, uh, Windows, you can have FreeBSD, anything, right? It doesn't matter what the host operating system is, right? Now, that means it has uh, it has a pretty good isolation. Now, let's go to container. Container, on the other hand, is sharing the operating system with the host. It only encapsulates the processes and software it's uh, supposed to run on the container itself. So all the OS files is shared across all the containers and the host. Why would anyone want to run application on containers? First is because it's much less bulky and require less resources compared to VM. It is faster to spawn, lightweight as well, because it doesn't need to have OS files inside the container. All the OS files sitting on the host. Second is the process isolation, because the, the, each of the process which is supposed to be on the on specific container is all isolated with any other process. Third is easier management due to dependencies encapsulation. OS and patches, basically you only need to patch one time and all the container will enjoy will enjoy new patches. As compared to if it is in the VM you have to you have to patch every single VM because every single VM has its own OS files. Application environments and application code and dependencies are all encapsulated within the, uh, each container. 
and with due to the encapsulation this is a this is one part of uh, that is that make it easy for continuous testing which is part of the devops workflow to show you the proof that uh, kubernetes is uh, very very um, fast adopted by companies based on study conducted by nirmata at kubecon and cloud native con 2018 uh, from over 150 it professionals basically 78 percent are uh, using or plan to deploy microservices on kubernetes the rest of them as you can see they they might deploy other application like uh, three tier big data ai or nml uh, iot networking and so on and so forth based on the same study it's all it also shows that 52 uh, percent are using kubernetes in production and nearly 40 percent are using it in development and testing environments now let's take a look at the architecture every kubernetes system always have a master node this is where the kubernetes software resides and then you'll see uh, on top of it you have a kubectl this is the command line tool to send commands through the master through the master node uh, into the nodes on the right hand side you see nodes normally a kubernetes system consists more than just one node it com it uh, comprises of multiple nodes to form a cluster to have certain high availability inside each node you will find a, a number of pods pods basically is a group of uh, containers each pod has its their own network system and um, and other resources and hosting as well so all these containers within one pod will have to share all these resources uh, belong to the pod underneath is basically the docker software now that we know about kubernetes and its architecture let's go into mysql in odb cluster as you know mysql is the most popular open source database in the world it's widely used everywhere in any applications. Now, MySQL in ODB cluster is uh, basically the HA solution, high availability solution built on top of MySQL replication technology. It's comprised of three main components, which is MySQL group replication, which is uh, in this case, in this diagram, comprised of three nodes three database nodes you have on top of it you have mysql router and on the on the right side you have mysql shell which is the which is the tool to manage um, in odb cluster now the group replication um, comprise of three database nodes one will become primary the other two will become secondary the primary is available for it right the two secondary available for read only and mysql router will be the will be the one to manage failover anytime the primary is down mysql router will check and find out which one will become the new primary and it will redirect the traffic into the new primary node now why we want to run databases on kubernetes simply because of uh, support for the microservices architecture is uh, faster to spawn lightweight containers does not include os files and especially when your application is already running microservices model next is the to eliminate hefty license costs when you are using enterprise databases Quite simply because uh, many enterprise databases like MySQL and uh, MariaDB, they are they are actually um, licensed based on server. Where in this case, let's say um, you have uh, three physical nodes, three physical servers, 
a powerful one and um, you can run let's say in maybe 30 40 database containers it's totally logical and it's actually pretty common these days last one is a good ha feature even though you are running only a single instant data of uh, mysql so there is no cluster at attached there only a single instance and kubernetes will still handle the ha because kubernetes will simply uh, spawn another container when the database container uh, failed now to go further why mysql in odb cluster now in odb clusters is um, offer you a higher level of availability than just a single instance it is also affordable as you know because mysql mariadb and postgresql very very affordable licensing uh, especially uh, mysql and mariadb is actually as uh, running uh, uh, you know um, license per base per server also on the other hand uh, it's very easy to scale the read because um, every nodeb cluster by default you have three nodes and um, two of them is secondary which is available for read only that means uh, you can actually load balance your read only with uh, between these two uh, secondary nodes last one is multi master node mode multi master mode also available and um, it actually performs very well when you configure properly with of course with some condition attached and do uh, do take note of uh, these uh, conditions before you decide to go for multi-master because um, this is very important and it can make or break your application on with the challenges with databases on kubernetes now uh, first is io because by default database is um, currently is io intensive so um, there's a challenge to be able to decide which um, which um, storage requ are required and on top of that different databases have different requirements whether there are uh, maybe one database is database needs uh, ssd one database need uh, simply can run on uh, hdd one can run on RAID 5 properly the other one really really need RAID 10 um, and then maybe uh, some other databases require hybrid storage so they have a uh, different different storage requirements next is the different configuration for different database different database have different workload pattern like online and let's say it is a uh, transaction processing or even uh, let's say uh, analytical maybe reporting maybe uh, data warehouse uh, load right so different different um, database have different uh, configuration and and then also a different way of of application to connect into the database so this makes it more complex to manage the configuration for each and every container next is because of the nature of kubernetes pop is mortal so uh, kubernetes is by default designed for stateless applications so it is easy for you to uh, to simply uh, restart whenever whenever the container is down kubernetes will do it for you automatically but here the problem is database has to be persistent it has to run on a persistent storage right so so that is why uh, any database deployment on kubernetes has to run on stateful sets remember this stateful sets do not use uh, normal deployment because by default kubernetes use deployment now resources um, resources is shared across a lot of containers 
remember what I said earlier, um, Kubernetes cluster is running, uh, let's say, on a few uh, physical servers, but on top of that, can, you can have um, maybe hundreds of containers. That means uh, you will. Uh, uh, that means all database containers will be sharing uh, uh, a number of lots of uh, you know resources. Database containers will share uh, all the resources of these uh, um, physical nodes. So resource management can be very very complex. Security and audit policy compliance. Every uh, every databases have different security and audit policy compliance this make it hard as well and the last one is uh, of course skill set of the people who manage it so this is um, at this moment based on uh, my experience um, um, doing a number of uh, consultancy on certain companies um, not many engineers actually have uh, a, a proper skill set on Kubernetes because uh, Kubernetes itself is still um, considerably new, right? So um, yeah, so people need some time to, to take up and be familiar with this technology. So yeah, that is a uh, that is a pretty uh, pretty uh, good challenge there. Now that we know uh, about the challenges, how to overcome it? We have uh, first is we have to analyze the database environments. And Anal analysis in the beginning is very important, and uh, this will determine whether you will make it or you will break it in production. A couple of questions that we can ask ourselves before we decide. Uh, to move uh, the entire workload to Kubernetes is um, first whether it's already running on Docker containers. If it is already running on Docker containers, then uh, it is a no-brainer to simply move to Kubernetes. It makes it easier for you to manage. Now, if it is still monolithic, we need to ask ourselves, is it possible to turn it into microservices model? Now, also whether apps support splitting these databases into smaller, smaller chunks. Some certain apps does not support it. They simply uh, connect directly using one connections and they cannot be changed. So no choice. But certain um, uh, application, especially the, the, the custom application, they can see, uh, they can change it. They, they can support, uh, um, you know, splitting the splitting the databases into uh, different uh, smaller databases. Next is what benefits for the database to run on microservices versus monolithic. Don't get me wrong, running on monolithic, it's uh, not, it's not a bad thing at all. It is not a bad thing. Do not fall into this um, this uh, notion where everything has to run on kubernetes no no and no something that is running on monolithic and runs fine that's it do not touch it um, you better you it's actually better for you to focus on new application instead of changing whatever you already have and on monolithic and run very well how much effort you require to transform to microservices model this is something also you need to think about how much um, blood how much tears how much uh, sweat you need to spill in order to uh, transform right whether it is worth your time whether it is worth everybody's time in your team this is something that we need to think about Next is the, okay, database is basically, um, it's commonly used for, uh, database on Kubernetes is commonly used for caching layer. It's because uh, caching layer does not need to be persistent. Um, you know, you simply, uh, let, let's say that when the container is down, you can, uh, the Kubernetes simply uh, respawn it back up again, 
and the database is empty there and the application will simply freely duplicate. So not a problem. Next use cases is uh, normally database sharding. Database sharding is a good uh, is a good one because um, why why would uh, why would anyone want to shard a database is because they want to have a, a better performance because by having a smaller database a smaller set of data it is uh, they can run more they can run on concurrently they can achieve uh, highly parallel uh, processing so this is uh, this is a very good use case. Uh, one of the most popular uh, choices for data sharding solution running on MySQL, MariaDB, or Percona is actually Vitesse. Uh, you might have heard about this before. It is a uh, uh, very good, uh, uh, very, very uh, reliable um, uh, piece of software. You might want to take a look at that if you have interest in it. Next one is test and test and has I cannot emphasize uh, more the importance of testing now moving for from bare metal to VM is already required a, a, a big paradigm changes moving for bare, bare metal directly to containers it's even more changes a big huge changes so there is, there is there will be a lot of unknown situation where uh, you will never think about so do test any scenarios that you can think of this is very very, very important i've seen a lot of uh, uh, problems with uh, uh, with uh, companies that uh, move from bare metal directly to containers simply with um, you know because they are not doing enough testing testability especially on database workload search now database workload can search uh, due to due to anything maybe due to a uh, due to underlying problem within the database uh, due to a bug maybe due to uh, to 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 the nature of the application let's say they let's say if it is an e-commerce running on black friday um, there will be a lot of there will be a high search on that area i think you i think you you heard about the story from amazon story from uh, alibaba as well right that uh, that they they suddenly have a lot of transactions coming in on black friday on the 11 11 on 12 12 you name it Okay, uh, the next one is the no skill set in no time. If you have no skill set and you have no time to to to, to do all this all this thing, analyze and testing, I advise you to engage professional help. If you want if you want to still pursue and uh, explore uh, um, uh, going into Kubernetes, do engage a professional help how to start um, you can get a mini cube if you want to uh, play around in your on your own laptop on your own time go ahead and uh, download it from uh, the kubernetes uh, website from the mysql part you can go to the uh, github from uh, oracle this mysql operator is uh, is, pre is uh, created by the Oracle MySQL team. You can uh, you can get it there from this link. Now let's say you have a big team. You want to you want them to get familiar with uh, Kubernetes. Um, you can you can grab uh, a managed Kubernetes engine in the cloud. Most of the cloud provider provide uh, one for you. There are a lot of choices there. Uh, most of them offer free credits for for trial so and even some of them actually offer uh, for 12 months so uh, do make use of their generous offer and play around in the cloud all right finally we are at uh, almost at the end already this is a uh, uh, just key points 
um, do tor analysis first we need to do analysis uh, properly and uh, thoroughly this is very important this will just determine whether we break it or we make it in a production next is do test and test and test and test test any single scenarios that that uh, we can think of anything put it into uh, put it into the the system and test it because anything can happen especially on the workload search database workload can search at any time due to anything like i said before so um, and this will this can impact not just your database also other containers as well other containers might also have uh, other databases that is used by other applications right so this is very important do test monolithic is not is not bad if you have application or database that's already in monolith in, 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 i mean it's running monolithic model at this moment leave it aside if they are already running well leave it aside do not touch it hands off just concentrate on new applications leave it aside okay do not touch it last but not least find strong reasons to justify and get the top executive support this is very important you don't want you don't want in the midst of your uh, journey to transform to kubernetes suddenly the management come down and and you know stop everything you don't want this to happen so do get the management support first before uh, embarking on the journey the next few slides um, will uh, consist of uh, of all the steps for you to um, to set up a mysql operator for kubernetes uh, you can follow them i believe uh, um, our friends from force asia will will put this uh, online this slides online so everyone can see it everyone can download it and uh, just follow the steps to uh, to get it up and running on your own system or probably in the public cloud as well All right, guys. Um, th this is it. Um, thank you very much for uh, spending uh, about 28 minutes with me here. Uh, thank you, uh, our friends from Force Asia, to make this happen. Um, every anyone that wants to connect with me, go ahead. This is uh, this is my contact. Um, let me know if you guys um, suddenly think about um, having coffee and you need some friend. Call me up. Uh, ring me and uh, we have a coffee session while talking kubernetes thank you very much thank you <laughs>